What's good, everybody? It is your girl, Tika Deshaun of All Things Ruthless, home of the Ruthless Addicts. And I want to welcome you to Tyler Perry's Ruthless, Season 4, Episode 15, Do or Die Recap. And the description reads as follows. Desiree and Cal formulate a tricky plan after being outsmarted by the highest. And Lacey gives Laura valuable, valuable, valuable advice to remain alive, you guys. So with that being said, again, it's your girl, Tika Deshaun of All Things Ruthless, home of the Ruthless Addicts. Yes, we are going to see a foul on Lilo. We're going to find out that he is a PO. Um, he was Tyrone's PO. We already kind of knew that. Um, we didn't know whether or not he was truly related to the cartel. Well, Joan confirmed that he's not really a part of the cartel. Um, she definitely confirmed that. He was just saying that and he was lying about being a part of the cartel. However, she knows that he is for sure Tyrone's PO. And now the FBI are on the track for Tyrone. I mean, for Lilo. They're looking for Lilo, y'all. So this episode was absolutely crazy. I was definitely here for it all. There are some people that have been named. And now we're going to put the faces with the names. It's all going down. So with that, we see that this young boy has pulled up in the Rockadushi Rolls Royce, um, proclaiming that, you know, he was just driving into the town. And so Desiree says, uh, boy, you know, you are a young man. Basically, you shouldn't be joyriding in your father's car. You want to take your father's car for a joyride. And the young man was just playing a role. He was in actuality prepared to be that sacrifice that he was sent to be meaning he was willing to get arrested for the Raku. You know how the highest does it. He'll use the boys, the ones with that are 16 and under, to basically sacrifice themselves to go to jail because, you know, they won't do very much time if they end up going to jail. So the highest was definitely about to sacrifice this young boy. But Desiree says, I have, basically she says to let him go that she has other plans. So she's going to put a tracker on the Rolls Royce, the Rockadushi Rolls Royce, and we're going to see if the highest falls for it by using that vehicle and leaving off the Rockadushi compound. So we see that the highest decided, oh, well, actually, Daikon made the decision. They were going to leave in a black van, which was the smartest decision that they could actually make with the FBI being on their tail. And so the highest and, and Daikon and Joan make their way into that uh, black mobile. Now, then we see Ruth. She's in the bus and she's looking for some keys. And then in that bus walks the one and only Lewis. And Lewis is like, jo uh, Ruth, what are, you, what are you doing? And Ruth is like, I'm looking for keys. <laughs> she's straight up telling him what she's doing. And so with that, she finds some keys. She hides them. And then, again, she's questioned by Lewis as to why she's actually in the bus now this is the bus of death you have to be careful when you enter in this bus um many have been unalived in this bus so anyway we see that again george is there oh, i'm sorry y'all lewis is there asking he's questioning ruth and just telling her we're still gonna go with the plan and you have to just um have my money when i come back for you and your daughter but and that they were gonna leave that night but if you leave why are you coming back Ruth is just going to be ish out of luck. You know, I'm just saying, I'm just asking for myself. So anyway, we see that Bridget is eye hustling and she, that she sees that Ruth has walked out the bus and she see her man, Lewis has walked out the bus as well. And she is like, what the heck is going on? She was literally standing there like Ronnie from, um, Raising Cane, y'all. But anyway, <laughs> Bridget definitely, Bridget definitely, um, is going to later on question her man, Lewis about, why he was in that bus with Ruth. So in the watching trailer, we see Laura and Lacey. And Lacey is giving Laura the 411. She's telling her how to pretend to make it seem as if everything is okay. Um, she tells Ru uh, Lacey, Lacey tells her, you know, girl, just play the game. And that's what Laura's doing when Elder Mother walks in. And she says, oh, she did great doing the laundry. And then Lacey goes to explain why she's being punished and how she's being punished. And she volunteered to be chained to the washing machine, y'all. So anyway, we see that Ruth is outside. She's trying to see if any of those keys that she has actually works. She's trying to unlock the um, trunk of this particular car. Um, and then as she's working on unlocking this trunk of this car, 
up walks the one and only River. Now, River, of course, is in a bit of a trouble himself. He's trying to figure out what he should do because Peter is in the punishment trailer and is going to basically tell on him. Well, Ruth don't care about none of that. She says, poison him, get it over with. And I'm still looking for my daughter. Like the whole conversation was my daughter, my daughter, my daughter. And Ruth is in tears. I understand she wants her daughter. So then we see in that punishment trailer where Peter is and we see Malcolm. And Malcolm is telling Peter, look, that highest, that guy you call the highest is all actually named Tyrone. And he was in prison and he was getting uh, essayed multiple times and Daikon was his lover and Daikon protected him like he was given the, the whole 411 on the highest also that he that Peter could actually help him will Peter actually help him I don't know because Peter is telling him you know to be quiet what he's saying is it true um Peter is sound somewhat sounding loyal to the Raku um, he understands that he's going to be punished but he doesn't think that it's fair that he's going to be punished so we'll see how it all unfolds as to whether or not this message stuck to what um peter what malcolm said to peter so anyway we see back at the police station where desiree and cal have been approached and coolidge is there now coolidge kudos to you bro because he came with the 411 he talks about how lilo is missing how lilo is his po and lilo has been not been seen in a long time Oh my God, he literally came in with the 411. And then this next 411 was that Joan was an accountant. She's been scamming off a million dollars of that money that they're scamming for the Mercado cartel into her own account. And the co owner of this account, you guys, is the one and only Laura, which means that Laura and freaking Joan are literally working together. As we suspected all along, Ruth had the right not to trust her. So anyway, you guys, this other agent walks up and says that, you know, she basically lost Mac. Like, she don't know where Mac is. Mac's been gone for a while. Uh, she was supposed to be watching the show. So anyway, we see that Desiree and Cal, they're basically having a conversation as to how they're going to pull this thing off. They need to work together. He wants her to let her know what's going on. So then we see, y'all, we see old girl... Bridget and she is questioning her man Lewis as to why he was talking to Ruth. Of course, he's like, baby, I love you. You're the only one for me. You're the only one I'm with on this compound. Like just pulling up on her man at the gate. Um, so anyway, back at the gate, we see that the Rolls Royce, the Rockadoosh Rolls Royce, has made its way back to the Rockadoosh compound and it's driven by this boy. Now we also see that Lewis and Georgia, like, something is not right. Why would they just, you know? What are you doing? Where's the highest? And he said that the highest took another vehicle and that the highest went in another direction. So they did their job by questioning them. But Lewis and George are, you know, in their minds, they are thinking that something is just not quite right. They do let him back onto the Rockadusha compound. But again, in the back of his mind, George is like, something's not right. Let me call Daikon. So he gets on the phone, calls Daikon on the burner phone, suggested as suggested by George or by Lewis, and lets Daikon know, hey, the Rolls Royce is back. I'm driven by this boy. And that, and Daikon is like, well, why would they just let him, you know, come back? Why wouldn't they arrest him? So again, this boy was meant to be a sacrifice. However, um Desiree and Cal have other plans so the highest was like uh get on the phone call the sheriff and he calls uh <laughs> Malcolm I'm sorry y'all Daikon does just that he calls Sheriff Conley Sheriff Conley has no real information because they are keeping him away from what's really going on so then there's a moment where Joan says I can't I never trusted the sheriff. Like, girl, who even told you that they were talking to the sheriff? So Daikon and the highest look at her like, don't you ever, how do you even know that we're talking about the sheriff? And she says, oh, I just assumed, or I guess that's who you guys were talking to. The highest put her in a place and was like, stay in a woman's place. Don't worry about men's work. Stay in a woman's place. And he gave her that look and he meant exactly what he said, y'all. So, Joan, she definitely is uh, messing up. And anyway, y'all, we see this dude right here, Mag. He's made his way finally to the, 
the sheriff department and they are about to set a trap for he as well as sheriff conley they're going to feed them some bad information basically conley they're going to feed conley the bad information and they're going to see if matt will fall for it so then we see lace uh, zane and river and they're having this conversation R zane has automatically stopped trusting river because he came to her saying that they were going to be leaving that night but the guy who, who was supposed to take them out who's supposed to let them out of the gate is no longer um he's in the punishment trailer and he's saying that he needs some poison to unalive this dude but zane is like what do you mean y'all didn't let me in on the plan so she gets frantic and she is out of there she makes her way away from river because nobody has confirmed or talked to her and let her know what the plan was she did not like that so then we see aaron yes aaron get out get out get out listen i was so happy that aaron freaking kicked his way out of the back of this truck i did not want to see aaron unalive in this episode or any future episode so he kicks his way out of the back seat or out of the trunk through the back seat of that car he kicks away and now y'all aaron is on the run this episode so was absolutely crazy i tried to give you guys a quick recap i hope you guys enjoyed it if you checked out ruthless let me know your thoughts what would you rate this episode i gave it an, another 8.5 i was here for it not a whole lot of action but it gave us what we needed to give y'all it told some truths and this was definitely a do or die moment for the one and only aaron either you do it by getting yourself out of this trunk or you end up being unalived okay all right, y'all. Well, that's about it. Thank you so much for tapping in and tuning in with your girl, Tika Deshaun, of all things Ruthless, home of the Ruthless Addicts. If you're new to my channel, finding me for the first time, please hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you can receive reminders of new Ruthless content, okay? All right, y'all. That's about it. Thank you so much. And you already know, stay Ruthless.